was September 5th. Okay. Yeah. And then I lost my brother too when he was 19. So I was like, I relate to yeah. you on so many levels. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> Dip was scared of my bro. Yeah. As soon as we walked up, he was like, yo. Somebody was joking good in my life. Appreciate you, Joe Bull. Thank y'all. Alright. Well, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. And uh, how's that show? The show is great. Oh, my God. Well, happy game day morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Game day is starting really early today. I mean, really early. In fact, I'm not even ready for this because in an hour we have the Jets going against the Minnesota Vikings, which should be a really good game. And I have gotten nothing. I've literally got to do this video, go over the store. Fortunately, uh, the grocery store is right across the street. Grab some chicken wings and stuff for our Panami Brothers sandwich for tonight so we can get ready to enjoy some football. We will be live streaming. We're going to try and live stream all day long. That's like literally... 14 hours and I gotta tell you I'm tired boss I'm already tired <laughs> you, you may be watching me sleep that's a long day but for our cowboys um, this is this is crazy where we are right now with this season you know Jerry Jones has a way of selling you so much hope and you know We've seen, you know, it's it's not like it's that he has um, deceived us. Well, he has, but we want to believe. We always want to believe that, you know, when we let players go that, you know, we've got the next guy that's going to be great. You know, like when um, Brandon Cooks goes on IR, that literally our six-round pick rookie, that he's got Des Bryant-esque in him. That, you know, oh, my God, oh, God, thank God Brandon Cook's gone so we can finally get Ryan Fauntleroy out here, okay? You know, um, that bringing back Zeke Elliott, you know. We, we, we got rid of Zeke <clears throat> because he made too much money last year. And, of course, a lot of fans were like, oh, man, we got to bring Zeke back. <clears throat> I miss Zeke. Zeke's a guy. Zeke, 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 Zeke. And, unfortunately, I turned a blind eye to my own analysis. When it was time to pay Zeke, when I looked at typically what happens to running backs, that they have a short shelf life, that four year, that fourth year is kind of the peak. And after that, the numbers start going down. And currently, we have the worst running game in the NFL. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We have the worst. How abysmal is it? Well, there was um, Rico hurt his wrist this week and doesn't have a game set currently listed. See, I'm already on him. Um, and Rico has, he's our lead back, four games, four games, 134 yards on 34 carries, 33 and a half yards. Our number two back, Zeke Elliott. Zeke's got 24 rushes for 81 yards. Tony Pollard with Tennessee has more yards than our whole team combined running the football. That's abysmal, guys. <clears throat> you need a running game to nothing else when you're up to be able to run the clock. To end the game, keep the ball away from the opponent. We can't do that. You need a good running game so that way they respect the run and play action then works. Without a running game, you're taking literally half of your offense off the board. You become one-dimensional and predictable. 
and that's a recipe for disaster. When you only have one wide receiver that is experienced, let's take everybody else who is currently on the roster available. The Jalen brothers, Ryan Fauntleroy, and crew. There's less than 600 yards in receptions. Jerry said that this is a soft rebuild. This is more of the teardown. And if the Cowboys don't get a win here, it's going to be pretty tough. It's going to be a long, long season. And without bringing in some more troops with the amount of injuries we have, Jerry Jones is speaking without saying anything. As he put it, if the phone's not ringing, that's me calling. And that's literally what it is for this season so far. It's going to be a long day before we get to the Cowboys here on Sunday night. The Cowboys are a three-point underdog per bet U.S., and my dad's going to take the points on that one today. And <clears throat> right now we're on a wing and a prayer. We are literally in Tony Romo land right now where you looked at the Cowboys who we're going to win. It's going to be solely because of Dak Prescott's arm and C.D. Land's hands. That's it. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I have a lot of concerns about the Cowboys and with the injuries that are mounting, it's it's kind of abysmal right now. So we're going to keep this short so I can get to the store here. And we'll be on live starting at 930. But listening to Chris Collinsworth and um, Rich Here's Eisen. the Cowboys, Chris. And I, I know it's, you know, it's part and parcel of being in a chair like mine to have, have – uh, a cowboy conversation and and wonder if they're in trouble but the the two guys up front being hurt and the the offense having no real run threat and, and i know again it's low-hanging fruit to say the guy that you saw rip 87 yards off to start the game for the ravens the other night would have been perfect with a star on the side of his helmet that's exactly the type of balance and a guy who could take the pressure off of Dak and CD, the exact side of guy that the Cowboys said they couldn't afford. I, I truly am looking around saying, where's the offense coming from? And mm -hmm. where's the slack on defense going to be picked up with Deron Bland out as well? I mean, you know, you, you saw on Thursday night where where Daniel Jones was picking on one of, one of the replacements. I, I, I'm literally wondering where it's going to come from with Dallas right now. Chris? Yeah, the hard part is that it, Dak's not going to run the ball as much as he once did. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Rico Dowdle, I think the longest run they've had this year out of a running back is 10 yards, maybe 11 yards, something like that. Um, some of the biggest plays they've had out of the backfield has been from Hunter Lipke, the <laughs> fullback coming out and making some catches down the field. Tremendous pressure on C.D. Lamb. I mean, they they're, I mean, they're putting him in the backfield and tossing him the ball now. Just anything to try and get him uh, involved in the game plan. And you really do need to go, okay, who is number two, right? Is it still Cooks? Does he have that still in him? Is it Tolbert who probably Cooks has is the injured. second most catches? Ferguson, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a non-explosive offense right now other than C.D. Lamb. And so and everybody has their own opinion of what works in the National Football League. But I, I think if you don't have the ability to create explosive plays, mm -hmm. that, that it's too hard. Uh, and, you know, there are too many holding penalties. There's just it's too hard to do these 12 play drives. Something inevitably goes wrong and you need that CD power that he creates. The problem is that, yeah, you can move them all around. You can pick for them. You can do different things. Um, but right now, teams all around the league are playing these umbrella coverages and not allowing deep throws. And But CD, at his best, is a catch-and-run guy. He's a dynamic and open field, uh, making people miss. He was in college. He is in the NFL. Um but, boy, it, it, you hate to even think what the offense would be without him at this point. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, yeah. 12 to 3 Eastern. Because literally, there is no other. Uh, I mean, if, if CeeDee Lamb were to get injured, 
guys, then, then it's over. And this makes you wonder, is, is this a rebuild? Is this, well, we, we've got our quarterback, we've got our wide receiver, and we're going to go ahead and look at getting rid of, you know, and, and starting all over. I, I'm, I'm actually beginning to believe this because you've done nothing really to make your team better. Um, you've got some positions where, you know, you're, you're trying out your rookie offensive linemen. They're going to get better and they'll be good. You think you have an offensive line for next year. You bring in a defensive coordinator who at the moment has not gotten the kind of guys that he needs for a system and you haven't gotten enough help or players with it. If you end up, if you end up, um, sorry, I put the TV on here and it's a little low. Um, you're, you're basically getting the young guys out on the field and getting them experience and setting yourself up for a high draft pick. And maybe this is the plan and you're just, maybe you're just tired of Mike McCarthy and maybe it is Bill Belichick. This has got me wondering what, where is it this season is going that, you know, is the all in actually really next year and not this year. So that's where we are. And our cameras are having kind of funny problems here today. I think I need to reboot my router here before the game starts. But we'll see what we're going to see, everybody. Um, I don't mean to be de doom and gloom today, but the injuries are just mounting and just hearing, you know, well, Devontae Adams, you know, that, that just costs too much. And hearing Derrick Henry, you know, we, we couldn't afford him. I, I'm sick of hearing about we can't afford. What you're saying is we can't afford a Super Bowl. Already good people, we'll see you in 48 minutes exactly for uh, the beginning of our game day. Peace out.